Good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm tired of people. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are live up here. Let's get to know. It's a uh, kind of a warm, muggy Sunday already, but uh, you know, through our worship time and already, it's it's I really sense God's presence here with us this morning, and it's good to have you here all here this morning. The title of my message today is: Do you really trust God? Do we really trust God? What is trust? Have you ever thought about what is trust? What would you give as an answer? I don't do this very often, so I take your opportunity. What is trust? Anybody? Give a one word answer if you said what trust was. And I'm warm. So this is my jacket. Maddie, you can grab this one. I trust Madeline to take care of my clothes. <laughs> Reliance. Reliance? Okay. What, what's another word for trust? Uh, Obedient. Obedient? What was the other, what was the other one someone threw out there? Faith? All good words for when we think about trust. Um, yesterday I had a trust that our devil was going to take care of me. Because yesterday I had stuff coming out. Here, here, you know, any goal that's in my hand was coming out yesterday. And I really believe that our devil, I didn't trust that our devil was going to take care of our well being. I was so sick yesterday. That's why I think today I'm even warmer than I usually am. And I was just miserable yesterday. So we trust, we have to trust, right? We, we, uh, we put a lot of trust in a lot of different things. We trust, trust our government, for the most part, that they're going to do what's right. Um, depends on who you voted for in the last, uh, t last election. You may not trust this government, but in general, we trust our government. As Canadians, Americans think there's a conspiracy everywhere, but as Canadians, we typically trust our government. We trust um, our wealth often. So we often put more our trust in our things, in, in what we have, and what uh, we're able to produce, what we're able to hold on to. And we put our trust off sometimes in our own knowledge, right? We think we know what's right. We trust that uh, we've been taught properly. We trust those kind of things. That, uh, so knowledge is often the thing we trust in. We trust sometimes our parents. As we get as we're teenagers, we don't necessarily trust them. We think that they're crazy or don't know anything. But as you get older again, there's that period that you're as a child you believe that your parents wouldn't wouldn't lead you astray ever. And then there's a teenage period where you don't necessarily really trust your parents. And then after you're a teenager and you get older. You realize your parents aren't that crazy and aren't that stupid and, and actually they, they do look out for your best well, your well-being. That's the reason that they made you stay home, they made you do, do such and such and, and take care of things and, and so forth. So we trust our parents at times. And then one other thing I thought about, sometimes we will trust even, you know, as a, as a people, we'll trust in our military might. We trust in our, our ability to do things. We trust in our, our ability to handle the, what, what's out in the world and things like that. problem with this is, and these things and others that, uh, that we haven't mentioned, that we put our trust in today, is at some point, they'll fail you, regardless of what you put your trust in. You put your trust in money, well, we know in the last little while, the last, what, uh, uh, six or seven months, money is a good place to put your trust in because it can fall apart and money can just uh, disappear all of a sudden. Your investments can evaporate. We put our trust in in our parents, you know, sometimes things fall apart, things don't work out the way we thought, and sometimes our parents might even fail us. I know we know our government will fail us, we know knowledge is not always what it's cracked up to be, because the, what I had in my, my textbooks, well, let's say 30 years ago, is very different at times than what we see in textbooks today. But uh, it's, that's why they can sell encyclopedias every year, because every year, knowledge changes. So what we thought was absolute before is going to might fail us tomorrow. So we have to be careful what we put our trust in. I believe there's only one real place, obviously, and if I wasn't, if I, was, if you, if I didn't say this, you would uh, probably be wondering why. But the only place I believe we put our trust in is in God. God told Joshua when He took over from Moses in Joshua chapter one, verse five, and says, "I'll never leave you nor forsake you." I believe God is the same with you and I today. 
He will never leave you nor forsake you if you put your trust in Him. John chapter 10 verse 28 tells us, I give, I give you eternal life and they will never perish, ever. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. That's Jesus talking about His disciples. His, those who follow Him. Those who believe in Him, put their trust in Him. Who receive Him into their hearts and, and, and follow Him for, the, for all their days. So will you trust Him for your, in your life? Will you? Will you trust God is what... Is, is what he uh, is what trusting in God is what we're going to talk about today, and how do we really trust in the Lord? Before we begin, just so I can get on track and get a little more comfortable, because I'm just I know it's not I know it's warm, but I'm just sweating today. That's why I have some heat here up here this morning. So, so you might get a shorter sermon than some of you go Let's go ahead and pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can come before you today, sing praises to you. Be reminded of your holiness, your greatness, and your mercy for us. Father, as we consider and talk to your word, help us to understand better how we might trust you and how we should be trusting you. We pray for these things now in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. So there's four areas that I think that we need to trust God in. The first thing is in everything. In Proverbs chapter 3 is where we get our text this morning from. In verses 3 through, through down through uh, verses 12. But the, the verse that I want us to, that is really our key this morning is in verse 5. It says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. So often we try to, when we try to understand this world, we try to understand God, we try to understand from our perspective, from our understanding, how we work within, within each other. We try to put our our model or our uh, box around God. And it doesn't work that way. In this verse it says, trust the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. So when, as we look through this passage, I think we're going to get an understanding of how we trust in God. And that's when we're going to begin in verse, in verse 3 and 4 and 6. 3, 4 and 6 says, we need to trust in God in everything. Let's read that there. It says, never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. When you will, then you will find favor and high regard in the sight of God and man. Think about Him in all your ways, and He will guide you on the right path. Verse 6 kind of tell, helps me understand. It says, think about Him in all your ways. So when we need to trust in God in everything, we need to trust Him in, the, in school, in your job, in everything, not just church. Not just the spiritual side of things. We need to trust God in all things that we that we do in our lives. When you decide to change jobs, when you when you decide about think about going to school, when you think about getting married, when you date, we need to trust God in all things. In everything that we that we do. Don't limit God to just your religious decisions. He's so much more than that. So in this passage here, think about him in all your ways, and he will guide you the right path. You ever struggle trying to figure out what to do next? I know I do. This week, Ardell actually thought about this, is, is starting to pray about and think about going back to school, which is scary for us because that means money. And those things. But we need to trust God in everything. And allow Him to guide us and direct us. If we go on to another passage that sort of helps us understand this better, it's Psalm 32, verse 8 through 11. And this morning, if you um, are ready, we're going to do a little bit of Bible trials. So we're going to jump around into God's, God's Word a little bit here. But in verse 8 through 11 of, of Psalm 32, we read, I will instruct you and show you the way to go. With my eye on you, I will counsel. I will give counsel. Do not be like the, like a horse or a mule without understanding, that must be controlled with a bit or and bridle, or else it will come. It will not come near you. Many pains come to the wicked, but the one who trusts in the Lord will have faith and faithful will have faithful love surrounding him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones. Shout for joy, all. Upright in heart. God wants to direct you in the right path. God wants to give you direction. God wants to help you to know 
which direction you need to turn, which, which direction you need to go, what street you need to go down. I'm not talking about literally what, as you're driving down the street, whether you should turn left or right. I'm talking about in our lives. God wants to help us in those things. But it takes us trusting Him. But He doesn't want us to be like a horse or a mule, it says here. That it requires a bridle in their mouth. Because if you've ever ridden a horse, I don't, I don't know, I used to ride horses when I was a child a lot. We'd go out to Spruce Grove and we'd run the horses even. And uh, they were guided by my bridle. They, were, they, had, you know, they, they would just run all over the place if you didn't show them the right direction to go. God's not asking you to be like a horse that has to have a bit in his mouth. He wants to be in relationship with you. To, love, to trust in him in that and everything in that sense. Not to, so that you have to be steered. But you gladly follow him where he said, wherever he directs you and how he directs you in your life. It's a challenge for us to do to be that way. But so often we, we when we when we just we just when we just trust him, he'll give us the right direction to go. He wants you to understand his ways and follow him. He wants you to, to be to, to be with him and to be in relationship with him. But not only do we need to trust in God in everything, we need to trust in God for, for everything. Proverbs, back in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, we said, it says, Don't consider yourself to be wise. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strength for your bones. Let the Lord give you wisdom. James tells us if you lack wisdom, God will provide it for you if you just ask of Him. Trust the Lord to provide and provide for you. Turn away from the world. Turn away from the, those things that want to direct you in, in, uh, in the wrong direction. I'm having a hard time focusing this morning because I'm just not breaking out into a sweat this morning. So just, just be patient with me as I, so I might pause here and there. But... Uh, God really does want to provide for us. If He want, if He wants, if He wants to give us direction. So it says, as we say here, He wants. We need to trust Him for everything. We need to trust Him for our and for for direction, for um, wisdom, for understanding and how He wants to interact in our lives. We read a passage this morning how we need to be holy for God is holy. God wants us to have a have. That, that in our lives. But we can't do it ourselves. We need to trust Him for that. We need to trust Him to be able to guide us, to be able to direct us. I want us to look again at another psalm. It's Psalm 37, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 37, verse 1 through 4. says there, do not be agitated by evildoers. Do not envy those who do wrong. For they wither like, quickly like grass and wilt like tender green plants. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you your heart's desire. If we trust in God, He'll care for you. Don't envy what the world has, you know, the cars, the money, the house. God will take care of you if we put our trust in Him. You need a job? Trust God. You need understanding as to what, what, uh, what to do next? Trust God. You know, as you, you might be getting ready to move to Vancouver or places like that, maybe, unless they. And yet it's hard to know what to do when you get if you get there. What do you do? Trust God for for the answers. When we went to Oklahoma, we drove, we packed up our car, and we had this Beverly Hillbilly looking trailer. It was an old pickup box, and we had it packed, and we actually put on. So we had the pickup. It's an old four by four box, and I added to the sides to it about four feet high. So we packed up almost all of our belongings, except for most of our furniture. But we, had, and we didn't even take a bed with us. We didn't take a, a couch or chair. We took our, our TV, and it was huge, you know. Uh, you, you, 
can think about TVs today. Our TV was, we thought it was a huge TV, it was 13 inches, right, I think, that's right. And, um, but, uh, you know, you, when you see things run across the screen, it was hard to figure out what it was. Uh, I remember our son watching basketball, trying to figure out what those guys were doing, running up and down all across the screen. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, when we got, we went down there, we didn't know where I was going to work. We didn't know where we were going to live. We didn't know how we were going to provide food for ourselves. We didn't know most of the things that we would usually trust in. But we would ask God for everything and to provide for us. And as we got down to Oklahoma, we soon went, and, uh, went, went to a, a friends of ours that lived about, oh, about three hours away from where we were going to go to school. So we couldn't even live with them or, or you know, rely on them. But they said, well, we have some extra furniture. Why don't you take some furniture and, and we'll do that. We actually slept on a bed. And you, no lie, I've never seen this bed. It was probably older than, than um, oh, I don't know, Cam or I or... Or, or, or Chester. <laughs> it was this bed with the springs on it were open. They were just these metal springs. That it was like kind of like a box spring, but you, it was just metal. It was a metal frame that you put the bed on and the mattress on. And then the mattress, I think, was probably almost as old. And the bed, the bed frame or the box or the end headboard, the footboard, and it was a beautiful bed. It was just very old. And then we had a couch and chair that they provided for us, and, and a few little things like that. We bought ourselves, we ended up, we went down to the Goodwill kind of place. It wasn't Goodwill, but we got ourselves a table. And uh, we, so we went down and we drove down to Shawnee, Oklahoma. We were in Duncan, which is uh, on the other side of what doesn't matter, you know, where it is in here. But we drove, we drove down to, the, to school, and we thought, okay, God, we need a home. And he provided a home for us. Now, this home was interesting. After a couple of weeks, we were infested with fleas, and, and we had poisonous spiders, and we had uh, um, uh, not mice, but uh, squirrels. Not like the little squirrels we had here, like giant squirrels. I've never seen squirrels this big. Running inside of our roof. And um, our, 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 our bathroom was this color of, it was, what, what would you call it? Pepto-bismol. And it, it was, but it was, God provided a place for us. And shortly after that, we were able to get a place on campus, too. And, uh, you know, we got to care of us and that. And then we were down there for a little while, and we, we spent a lot. I had to pay for my school, and it was all, of course, in U.S. funds, and it was a, it's a private school, so it, was, it wasn't cheap. And uh, we didn't have any money left. And we said, Lord, you've provided for us so far. We need to trust you for this, too. I went out to preach, and I went, actually I didn't go to preach, I just went out to give my testimony out at, uh, out in the, at a couple um, churches, and another fellow was preaching, they would send us out on a regular basis, I was part of the ministry program there, and um, I just shared my testimony that we'd come down to school here, we, you know, we were just trusting God for, to take care of us, and um, we were having a great experience, and, and, and uh, you know, it was just wonderful, we were having a wonderful time, and uh, learning a lot, and, and everything, I didn't mention anything about our needs. Our physical needs. That night, the two churches that we that I that I spoke at put together a food pantry for us, provided food for us for the next two months, almost close to about a year long. And then, as we were going along, it came, it came to Thanksgiving time. This is back in, in September, October. And then, and then in November, we were still not. We didn't have a lot of money. I got I got a, I did get a job on campus, and that's a whole other story. I said I wouldn't. I'll do anything, Lord. Just provide me a job. I'll do anything that you want, but don't make me work in the, in the cafeteria. Never talk about where you work. So I worked in the cafeteria. And we made a big, big dollar of three dollars. I think we made, I made about $3.60 an hour. And um, I worked got, got the, a lot of hours. We made 12, got 12 hours a week. And so November rolls around. We're still not really doing great financially. We don't have a lot of money. And uh, we got a phone call one day. It was around Thanksgiving. And November, thank, you know, uh, American Thanksgiving. And one of the, the, our Sunday school classes at our church called and said, we have a food hamper we want to give you. Again, God providing for our needs. Trust God for everything. And then we got another call shortly after that from another Baptist Student Ministries. And we had so much food at that point, we just said, said you know what, give that to somebody else. But if we trust God for everything, He'll provide. 
We've seen that in life, in our lives, and I know that if you would just, as you go through your life, as you really begin to put your trust in Him for everything, and for Him, in Him for, for everything, you'll begin to see that God will provide for you. God will make a way. God will open the doors that you never thought ever possible. He'll, you know, don't envy those evildoers. Don't envy those who, in the world, who have, seem to have so much. Don't envy those in the world who seem to, to be making it. Trust God for your needs, for everything. And then if we go over to Psalm 115, verses 1 through 11, we, we see again the same, the same concept. Psalm 115, verses 1 through 11. It says, not, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give uh, give glory because of your faithful love, because of your truth. Why should the, the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven and does whatever he pleases. For their idols are silver and gold, made of human hands. They have, they have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, uh, feet but cannot walk. They cannot make sound from with their throats. Those who make them, make them are just like them, as are all those who trust in them. Israel, trust in the Lord. He is there, is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. He who fear the Lord, you fear, pardon me, you who fear the Lord, trust in, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. Don't trust in the gods of this world. Don't trust in the things of this world. Don't trust in the, in the things that, uh, uh, that the world sees as important. Trust in God for the things that, that He needs, that, 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 that He'll provide for you, that is right. You know, God, there's all kinds of gods out there. There's all kinds of world religions out there that have these gods still today that don't, that can't speak, can't feel, that can't touch, that can't help, that can't do anything. But we trust in the Lord who is one who wants to reach out and touch us, who wants to reach out and help us, who wants to reach out and provide for us, if we but trust in Him only. For everything. Stop looking to the world for help. Trust God for the help that, that, we, that He wants to provide for us. But not only do we trust in, in Him for everything and for Him for everything, we need to trust Him with everything. In Proverbs again, chapter 3, back in our, our text, morning verse 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with your first produce of, of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled. Your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor God with what you have, and He will honor you. I, I remember my parents growing up telling us that if you, even if we went and did babysitting, or I never had a paper route, but any kind of job, I would cut the grass at the church. I made seven dollars a month to cut the grass every couple of weeks at the church. And you know, when, I, when whatever, even at that time, my parents said you need to give back to God how He's blessed you. So we were, we were always under that, that uh, um, sort of the rule of, of 10%. So even if I made $7, I gave 70 cents back to God. If I made $10, I, I gave a uh, dollar back to God. Well, let's see, then you, I'm getting in trouble here because I'm talking math. But, uh, but you know, as, as you, as you, and whatever we did, we provided back, gave back to God what He, what he honored us with. And when we honor God for what He's given to us, He will honor us. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, it's a very pretty self-explanatory passage there, but if you go there to that passage, it tells us how don't lay up for yourself treasures in this earth, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. We need to trust that God, you know, don't, don't be worried about accumulating here. Don't be worried about all those things. But we need to turn things over to God. You know, for us, my wife and I, that means that we said that with our children too. We trust God with our children. We trust God with our, our, our stuff. We, you know, we don't, our and I, when we first got married, it was ours, ours. You know, this is our stuff. This is, a, you know, we got, you know, we, we were very, I think we were fairly possessive. And our biggest arguments, where did they come from? Money and things. We fought over, that's what our big fights were. We came to a point, I don't know how long ago, but it seems that we slowly, God has worked in our heart. And, we, and it's what we found is that we get, whatever we have is God's, and however He wants to use it, it's His. And boy, is he, I think He's really blessed us. Now, we're not rich people, we're not wealthy, so I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I'm not 
talking about having lots of stuff. I'm not talking about that at all. What I'm talking about is that is that God has continued to honor uh, honor us by, by providing for us, by caring for us, by taking by helping us in, in all things that we've struggled with. If we go down in, in the same chapter, Matthew chapter six, verse thirty-three and thirty-four, it says, "What seek first His kingdom, and all the and all these things will be provided." Added unto you. You and I, we don't need to be so struggle. We don't need to struggle and worry about those things. We need to trust God. We need to seek Him first. We need to, to provide uh, to go to Him first with everything. And He'll take care of us. Do you trust God for everything? The other day, I think we were in, in, in prayer meeting, I said in that path, in that time, I said, you know, sometimes we just need to let go and let go. We want to hold on. We want to keep every, to hang on to all these things and worry about all these things. Yet, I think what we need to do is just say, Lord, it's all yours. You take care of it. And what we found in our, our lives, my wife and I, is that that's when God can do amazing things through us and with us. So not only do we need to trust God in everything, for everything, and with everything, we also need to trust God through everything. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, the final couple of verses that we're going to look at this morning, it says, do not, do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one, the one he loves, just as the father, as a father of the son he delights in. Whatever we face, let God teach us through. If we have, if we've failed, if we've sinned, trust God to show us the way out. If we struggled in some way, in, in, some, in some area, ask God to make sense of it. You know, I don't believe, I firmly, firmly don't believe that God causes things like bad things to happen in our lives. I don't think that's how God works. He loves us. But when things do happen in our lives, I believe God is there to help us understand it and to help us to better, to work through it. We need to trust God through everything. So you know, when, when we have times of struggle, when we have times that we face that, that we don't understand, why is this happening to me? We need to turn to God at those times and trust Him through everything, through those, those, those times, through everything. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, I'm going to turn over there now at this time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. It says, Therefore, we do not give up even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our moment, momentary light, light affliction is producing for us an absolute, incomparable, eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is, what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What we need to focus on here is that, is that even in the struggles, even in the hard times, we need to focus on what is what it has the eternal value. What has the things that is, that's, what, that's worthwhile for us to focus on. These things, things struggles and difficulties and hardships and, and failures, they'll pass but trust in God. I recall a while, a while ago when, uh, when I was in school at seminary, David Wyman um, was one of my professors and developed, developed cancer. And a lot of people, even some pastors, told him that you should be, be angry at God. You should be angry at God because why would, why would this happen to, to you? You're a man that has served God. You're a man that has worked hard and you You've worked hard to help people. You've been on the mission field. You've done all kinds of things. You sit. You, you, you go through uh, classes to educate young men and women in, in how to respond to God, how to live their lives for God. You should be angry at God for giving you throat. He had throat cancer. Man has never smoked a day in his life. His response is what I find honors God. Because in his response, he was shown that he trusted God through everything. Because his response was, no, what I have is not God's fault. It's 
result of the sin of man, because illness, illness is not because of what God has done in this world. Illness comes as a result of how man has responded to God. He said, my, my response here is that I'm going to honor God even during this time. So even in, his, in this sickness, in the, he had to go through chemotherapy, he had to go through radiation therapy, so they targeted his throat, and to, as a result, that he has no, no saliva glands. So now his teeth are, are, are rotting, and, and to, because his saliva protects your teeth, and he, he's just having a whole, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a lifelong time now of struggle. Now cancer is gone, but I found him as a, as a great example for me whenever I've heard, had struggles and, and, and hurt in my life, is that there's a man who could have lost his life, a man who experienced horrible things like chemotherapy, radiation therapy, all those things that people go through with cancer, yet through that he still honored God. Because it was the inside that was more important than the outside. It was the internal things, things of the eternal significance that were more important than the things outside. That were just were working on his body. I wanted to jump to one more passage in Psalm 112 this morning. Psalm 112, and it's the entire Entire chapter. Now that doesn't that sounds like a lot, but it's ten verses only. Hallelujah! Happy is the man who fears the Lord, takes taking great delight in His commandments. His descendants will be powerful in the land. The generations, the generations of, of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in His house, and His righteousness endures forever. Light shines in darkness for the upright. His gracious compassion and righteousness and righteous. Um, he is probably his gracious, compassionate, and righteous. Good will come to a man who lends gener generously and conducts his business fairly. He will never shake, uh, be shaken. The righteous will be remembered forever. He will never, he will not fear bad news, and his heart is confident, trusting in the Lord. His heart is assured; he will not fear. In the end, he will he will look in triumph on his foes. He distributes freely to the poor. His righteousness and, endure, and, and his righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted in honor. The wicked man will see it and be angry. He will gnash his teeth in despair. The, the desire of the wicked will come to nothing. In all you face, trust God. And you will be rewarded in the end. In all that you do, put your trust in Him. And in all that you face in this world, trust God through everything. It will be a benefit to those who follow, but you must, uh, who follow you, but you must trust in the Lord. And a lot of you are young, don't have children yet, but one day maybe. But I, it is my hope that because of my faithfulness and my trust in God and my wife's, that our children will be blessed as a result of it. I love how this passage sort of alludes to that. And, and when I think, I want to be an example through everything. And there's been times in my life that I've, I've struggled, I've failed. And I've had times in my life that I think, oh, I hope this isn't affecting my kids. But now I trust them. Through, I'm going to trust God through everything. And that he'll, he, he can work it out. I'm going to ask God to bless, to bless my children. I'm praying for my children on every day. And ask them that they'll, that they'll be able to understand who he is better. If we trust in the Lord. For, in, for, with, and through everything. One day we'll see the benefit. As Joshua did when he led the people of God into the promised land. Or as we will, as, just as Paul did when he traveled around preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Just as all those others before us who put their trust in God, people who witnessed great revival like George Whitfield or Charles Finney or Duncan Campbell, all these men saw God move in the lives of a people with no explanation except they trusted God in, for, with, and through everything. When God said go, they went. I love the story of Duncan Campbell because he, he tells all how he was going to an island in northern Scotland. 
And he wasn't, it wasn't on his mind, but there was two women uh, sisters that prayed and asked that God would send someone to preach to them to bring revival to their, to their town. And as he preached, he, he, uh, as, he, as he was preaching one in, uh, I believe it was in London, someone came and said, you need to go to this, tent, to this town, to this island. And he said, no, I'm too busy. But then God spoke to him, and he went. Great revival broke out into, in that town. Today we need Christians ready and willing to trust God in, for, with, and through everything. People ready to go against the flow, ready to swim upstream, ready to go wherever God might lead them. People ready to do what God wants, wants from them. People totally sold out for God. Are you the one ready to surrender your life to Him? Do not regret it. It won't be easy. People will say you're crazy. People you love will tell you that you're, that you're making a mistake. But if you trust the Lord, you can't sit idle. You can't sit back and let those people direct your lives. You can't sit back and let the world tell you what is right and what is wrong. You must trust God in, for, with, and through everything. We all have opportunities to join God in His work. But it's like we are standing next to a river on the bank. And if we don't jump in and, and, and at the opportunity God to join God, it'll float by us. But you might be saying, the river's too deep. It's uncharted. It's too fast. I'm afraid of the water. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and go where, he, where He's called you to go. Maybe your parents don't agree with you. Maybe your family says that, no, you shouldn't be doing that. Maybe there's another thing that you should be doing. Maybe it's not, maybe it's, you can't, enter, don't enter the ministry. There's no money there. It's not, you're not going to get wealthy. Well, maybe unless you're a TV evangelist, right? But, uh, or one of these kind of guys. But you know, if, maybe, you're, maybe God has directed you into the ministry. And you're going, oh. What do my family think? What do my friends think? We can't worry about that. We must trust God in everything, for everything, with everything, and through everything. Jump in, join Him, trust Him. I've heard of people who said, Yes, Lord, I'll trust you. But they had their families turn their back on them. One of my friends whose family, when he was in Egypt, he even turned him in. Had him thrown in jail because of he, he accepted Christ. And when the day came for him to be executed, because they were going to hang him, Egypt was invaded and the prison doors were thrown open wide. And he kept to this day believes. This was a miracle of God because he trusted in God for everything, in everything, with everything, and through everything. Why? Because God changed his life. God's been coming to your 